Hey there all you cool cats and kittens, welcome back and welcome to part 20 of my build log of the Trumpeter 1-200 scale model of the Calcutta Cup, sorry, of the Titanic. In today's episode I will be looking mainly at the stuff I've done to finish off the Folksall and Ford well deck. Uh, I'm aiming after this video to have pretty much done everything on those two sections except for things like railings, uh, the anchor crane and the Ford mast. So without any further ado, I will crack on. So in the last video, I um, I pretty much finished with the Folksall deck, probably about half done. Um, in this clip, I am adding the retention chains. These are small, tiny little chains which slot through one of the links in the main anchor chain. Um, and they're used for things like um, preventing the chains from slipping and moving around because those tra the actual anchor chains are remarkably heavy. Um, these come on the KA set as a single part um, and I think you probably could slot them through the anchor chain if you wanted to but what I chose to do was to cut them in half in the middle and then glue each half independently so you can see I'm doing the leftmost one at the minute uh, then I'll do the next one across and so on and so on and so on. Quite a fiddly little job, but they do add a nice little bit of interest to the model. I don't think there's a huge amount that needs my explanation in this video, so I'm just going to let you watch it without me droning on in the background.
onto the Foxall deck now. Uh, I still need to add the um, the drives between here and here, they're yet to be done, but I've added pretty much everything else. The capstans, which are absolutely gorgeous, these tracks, hatches, uh, the restraints for the anchor cables. Uh, I've also added these. Now, some of you may object to them to the, uh, the, the dials being in red. The reason I've done them in the red is because I was talking to somebody on the Facebook group um, and their grandmother sailed a lot on the Olympic um, and she had apparently written in her diary about the, um, the crew working on these valves uh, and manipulating the yellow, uh, sorry, the red handles. So I've chosen to go on that on the basis that it's actually a first hand account. Whether it's right or not, um, it's one of them things that we'll never know, but I prefer to trust a source like that uh, than anything else, I think. Um, and it certainly does make them stand out as well. They're a lot more eye-catching in that colour than they are otherwise. Um, I've also done the breakwater, which looks great. Um, there's the nice notice sign there, warning passengers not to go any further. Um, and this is one of the things that I was looking forward to doing on the KA set. Um, on the Pontos set, each one of these little stanchions uh, are independent and you have to stick them on yourself. On the KA set, they all come as one piece, uh, which made the job miles, miles easier. Uh, I've then got this skylight here and the ventilator shaft here. Uh, and the grills on these are just brilliant. Look at that. So happy with it. Um, this, I've actually decided to use the um, the photo etch from the Trumpeter kit rather than the KA kit on this. And the reason for my doing so is because the KA kit doesn't have holes. Uh, there's sort of, there's etched circles, but there's no holes. Um, and I did paint that black to try to make it look like there were holes, but it just didn't look as accurate. Um, so I dug this one out from the kit and I, I just think it looks a bit better. Uh, it's the first time I found a part in the kit which I thought was, be which I thought was better than the KA kit, but uh, on this occasion um, I did think that the kit was actually better than the KA uh, offering, which, um, well, it's, it's a luxury to have both options really. So the KA set comes with these sort of um, photo etch parts which go on the side of the well decks and they just they just give the, the, the ship's side a little bit more detail. Um, when I painted them however I did think that they were a little bit too flat. Uh, you see these two are particularly, they're all very one dimensional, there's only one colour on them really. So what I've done is I've made a very very thin uh, wash with cellulose thinners and the Humbrol, uh, what number is it? Humboldt 33 matte black, uh, and it's, it is really thin. Um, I, I can't, I don't really know how diluted it was, but um, this paint is really thin. And this piece here is one that I've already painted. And just by rubbing that wash on, it just sort of collects in areas that would acquire more dust and that would have a bit more shadow in them. Uh, and it just sort of brings the detail out a bit. So that's what I'm going to do on the rest of these. And you see how thin the wash is, it really doesn't have very much paint in it at all. All I'm doing is just sort of very lightly coating the whole thing, sort of with particular focus on the actual sort of details on the, on the part. See, it doesn't take a lot, but it just makes things stand out that wee bit more. It just gives, takes that sort of perfection sheen off that we're probably not really after. So, close up. 
and they've now got a little bit more sort of character to them. They look a bit more realistic. The, um, the weathering's actually coming across a bit more than it is in real life. Um, they look slightly more sort of uniform than they do on the camera, but um, the effect, I think, should be quite good. So here is the forecastle deck with everything except the anchor cranes. Uh, Ford anchor's not glued down yet. I need to get a. I want to get a countersunk bolt for here, but everything's in place now. These drives were very fiddly, but well worth it. And in the end, it's just so nice. It just looks so detailed. Um, so I'm really happy with it, and that is in fact all of these sections complete. The uh, sides look very nice as well, very happy with how they've turned out. I was a little worried they might look slightly overweathered, but I actually don't think they do, I think they fit in quite nicely. Uh, same on the other side. Slight little issue here, I need to work out some way of making sure that this deck stays pinned down because it is a bit proud at the moment you know but apart from that it looks fantastic i also have a slight confession to make um quite early on when i was doing the folksall deck i slightly bore something up and i noticed that um i'd stuck a part down um which wasn't quite in the right place so i had to take it up again and it was one of those mistakes that you you really only make once you know, once every two or three years where you just get a bit too eager to see the finished product, you know, and you, you do it a bit too quickly. Uh, anyway, having taken up the parts, the deck underneath was slightly damaged, damaged enough that I wasn't happy with the, uh, with the effect. Um, and so what I did was I, um, I checked how big the damaged area was and I cut that out. Um, and because Scaledex has such fine resolution on its planking, I just counted the number of planks I needed to fill the gap, um, and I cut out a piece of spare. Um, the scale decks come on big sheets, so there's quite a lot of printed wood that actually it doesn't end up being used. Um, so I just cut out a spare piece from there and sort of patch repaired it, and glued the new piece down, tapped it with a hammer, uh, the same way that you might if you're doing something like a marquetry, uh, and, and fixed it. Um, as you can see in this image, the, it is still noticeable if you know what you're looking for, but I'm fortunate in the sense that this area of the deck's pretty busy with stuff going on, so I don't think it's too obvious. Um, and the reason this is a bit of a confession is because this was actually in the last video, and I was interested to see if anyone in the comments actually picked up on it, and nobody has, so that satisfies me that this repair is, is, is good enough um, to make do with, really. Um, but I thought I'd include it. I, I was sort of half tempted to leave it out, um, 
but I thought I'd include it because I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if other people come up with these problems, um, but it is actually pretty solvable. So some of you might be wondering what I'm doing to um, apply my glue, because I have now stopped using the actual glue bottles because you just don't get a good enough accuracy on them. So what I've done, and I need to say from the outset, this was not my idea in the slices. This was an, an idea from a viewer who posted in the comments. So thank you very much if that was you. It's a really good idea. Um, but what I've done is I've taken two of the um, mahogany planks, which I didn't use in the keel blocks, uh, and I've glued them together and drilled a hole in between the two of them. And into that hole, I've inserted a sewing needle, which is here, and I've glued it in place. It's pretty pretty solid. And the um, the wood's just to make a sort of makeshift handle, you know. The, uh, the needle is what actually does the work. And what I've done is I've chopped the top off the eye of the needle. So you can't really see on here because it's a bit too gunked up. Um, but what you essentially end up with is two pieces of metal like that and the eye of the needle would sort of come around here like that and close off um, and it's quite reminiscent of the um, the first needle that was used um, back in the late 1700s when Edward Jenner discovered that um, that cowpox could be used as an effective natural vaccination against smallpox that was the first sort of needle they used and the reason it works is because uh, if you dip this sort of thing into a liquid the surface tension holds a small amount of the liquid in between the two pillars. And that's exactly the same principle with this needle. When you dip it into the bottle of glue, a small amount of glue is held between the two parts of the eye of the needle. And that's enough for gluing most things. Um, and it just gives you loads more sort of granularity of control when you're gluing stuff. Um, and inevitably, you know, even the best glue bottles will get gunked up over time and become much less effective. So this is a really good idea. I've made three or four of these, some with a bit of a longer reach, some with a finer reach, some with a bigger eye of the needle so I can get more glue. Just sort of, you know, you can sort of work out what works for you. And I'll probably end up chucking these once I finish the model and making some new ones because they are undoubtedly sacrificial components. Um, they get gunked up, as you can see, uh, but you can get the glue off relatively easily. You can burn it off if you want, if you've got a lighter or probably over your kitchen hob, to be honest. Um, what I tend to do is um, I tend to hang on to some of the blunter um, craft knife blades that I have. Um, and so I tend to just use a blade, which doesn't really matter if it gets any blunter than it already is, just to scrape off um, the excess glue. And that does a pretty good job as well. So um, if you're the viewer that sent me this, uh, thank you very much. That was a really good idea. Um, and I'd thoroughly recommend it. It certainly gives you a lot more control when you're gluing stuff. So that's about it for this episode. That's both of the forward decks completely finished now, except for things like masts and rigging, etc. So I'll leave you with some photos of the handiwork. As you might have guessed from the start, I am a happy man at the moment. Uh, Scotland beat England in the Calcutta Cup at the weekend. Um, I've been a Scottish rugby fan my entire life. Um, and the last time Scotland beat England in England was in 1983, which was 10 years before I was born. So at the weekend, it was a genuine first in a lifetime experience for me. So very, very happy. Um, <laughs> anyway, apart from rugby, um, if you do have any questions or comments, pop them down below and I will do my absolute best to get back to you. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, give us a like, think about subscribing and I will see you in the next one when I'm going to be starting on the aft well deck and the poop deck. Bye for now.